Unlike any other bird, megapodes bury their eggs deep in the ash and let the warmth of the volcano incubate them. The megapod egg laying site is just down there. If George is to find an egg, he must wait for them to finish and hope the volcano stays quiet. Mount Pasavi is extinct now, but the eruption left behind this crater four miles wide, enclosed by towering walls. Steve's still out exploring the river, but it's not just the rocks that are treacherous. This plant is making life here absolute hell. They're everywhere and uh, they're called a stinging tree. On the, uh, the underside of each leaf are thousands of little hairs all filled with poison. And uh, the sting actually can carry on going for two or three months. Ow! <laughs> so do I. <laughs> Every little stream is investigated. Any one might hide a surprise. Sticking up out of this vine, lots of little twigs. Except they're not twigs, they're leeches, just waiting for something to walk past. They're, uh, they're switched on by warmth and also by the carbon dioxide you breathe out. And if I just breathe on them, Look at that, instantly feeling around for the source of it, looking for a blood meal. Oh, I hate them. Steve may hate them, but leeches mean there must be lots of warm-blooded animals to feed on. It's an encouraging sign for the mammal experts. Chris Helgen from the Smithsonian Museum is the world authority on identifying new mammal species. From the river, Steve's brought in a fragment of skull. You can see this pretty much has fallen out, that corresponds to this too. When you're, when you're studying mammals, the, the dentition, the arrangement of the teeth, the amount of teeth that are there, that, that's one of the most important things in, in figuring out what something we're, is. We're really lucky as mammologists because, you know, if we find a single tooth or a single piece of a skull, we can often tell exactly which species it is. Yeah. This is a mystery still, but uh, I'd like to find the animal uh, that goes along with this skull. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, let's see if we can find it in the forest. Wow. So I, I could be holding in my hand the skull of a new species of mammal. Let's, uh, let's, see, let's see where it takes us. Gordon and the scientists head out to look for Basava's mystery mammal. Chris thinks it could be a new type of cuscus, a small bear-like animal. The spines on all these branches. To be certain, they'll need to catch one alive. It's quite a good flat area here. As it's such a big trap, I need to kind of find a big flat space. You don't want it kind of any parts of the wire suspended. Check this up at the end. Finding any animals, small or large, would be a bonus. Everyone has their own technique for baiting the traps. I'll tell you what, a little bit of um, peanut butter never hurts as well. Throw her in the back there. Smell it for miles. At the volcano, George's wait is nearly over. Now there should be eggs buried somewhere in the ash. I think the birds have finished laying now, so with any luck, I should be able to find some freshly scraped ground, which might indicate that where the eggs are laid. Once the megapodes leave, the volcano will keep the eggs warm until they hatch. 
This looks like uh, exactly where they're being lit. They could be as much as two meters underground. I reckon down there is an A. When the chicks hatch out, alone and in the pitch black, they claw their way to the surface. <sighs> well, I'm almost at that, as far as I can reach down. Yes, I think I've got one. <laughs> there is a megapod egg. It's the size of it. The chicks emerge well developed, fending for themselves from day one. They never know their parents. What a tough start to life in this tough environment. <laughs> <laughs> that was almost a scrambled egg there. He returns the egg to safety, but nearby, animal tracks lead him further into the danger zone. That's getting a little too close for comfort. That's coming halfway down the slope there, easily. Nice hole down there. In the crater, Gordon and Chris are still out searching. No, no, it doesn't really go in. That broken bit's hollow. They're looking for the mystery Cuscus, the mammal whose skull Steve found earlier. Have a look at me. Yeah, take this to the torch. Yeah, give it a go. Oh, crikey! <laughs> You've got somebody? Yeah. Somebody's home. Something is holed up in an old tree trunk, but it's too deep to see what it is. Just sitting there. <laughs> Let me have a look at that. <laughs> crikey. Yeah, have a look. All right. God, that is the weirdest thing. Oh, wow. Gordon will have to wait for it to emerge. What I want to do is just set up, maybe kind of over there, wait for it to get dark and see what happens. Oh, it's quite exciting. <laughs> if it is the new Cuscus, Gordon doesn't want to miss his chance to film it. It's looking pretty good. Just see what happens once I climb down. A small camera pointing into the tree stump will warn him if the animal starts to climb up. He can then film from a distance without disturbing it. The problem with this situation is just the waiting for the animal to come out. It will definitely come out. It's just a, a case of when. Good day, sunshine. Good day, sunshine. The long wait begins. The volcano is stirring, but George can't resist exploring just a little further. This is what's making those tracks. It's a really quite a large crab, and whoa, ow. The eyes are on these little stalks which flick up and down, so that's how it, it keeps its eyes out of harm's way. But that is clearly very at home here on this ash pile. I mean, it's, it's, it's a long way from the sea. Crabs are scavengers. They've come to pick over anything killed by the volcano. <laughs> 